Cassia or Cassiani Greek, Cassian Medieval Greek, Cassiani, 805–810 before 865 was an Eastern Roman abbess, poet, composer, and hymnographer. She is one of the first medieval composers whose scores are both extant and able to be interpreted by modern scholars and musicians. Approximately 50 of her hymns are extant and 23 are included in Orthodox Church liturgical books. The exact number is difficult to assess, as many hymns are ascribed to different authors in different manuscripts and are often identified as anonymous. Additionally, some 789 of her non-liturgical verses survive. Many are epigrams or aphorisms called gnomic verse. For example, I hate the rich man moaning as if he were poor. Cassia is notable as one of only two Eastern Roman women known to have written in their own names during the Middle Ages, the other being Anna Comnena. Name Her name is a feminine Greek form of the Latin name Cassius. It is variously spelled Cassian contemporary pronunciation Cascani, Cas Sigma Ia Cas S Ia, Icasia Icasia, Icasia Icasia, Cassiani, Cas S Ia, Cassian, Cassiana. Modern English language references to her as a composer generally use the name Cassia, while references to her religious life tend to use Cassia or Cassiani. Topic Life. Cassia was born between 805 and 810 in Constantinople into a wealthy family and grew to be exceptionally beautiful and intelligent. Three Byzantine chroniclers, Pseudo-Simeon the Logothete, George the Monk aka George the Sinner and Leo the Grammarian, claim that she was a participant in the bride show, the means by which Byzantine princes, emperors sometimes chose a bride, by giving a golden apple to his choice organized for the young bachelor Theophilos by his stepmother, the empress dowager Euphrosine, smitten by Cassia's beauty, the young emperor approached her and said, Through a woman came forth the baser things, referring to the sin and suffering coming as a result of Eve's transgression. Cassia promptly responded by saying, And through a woman came forth the better things. Referring to the hope of salvation resulting from the incarnation of Christ through the Virgin Mary, according to tradition, the verbatim dialogue was Ek gynaikos ta chero. Medieval Greek, ek inkos ta chero. Ki ek gynaikos ta krito. Medieval Greek, ce ek inkos ta krito. His pride wounded by Cassius' terse rebuttal, Theophilos rejected her and chose Theodora as his wife. When next we hear of Cassia in 843 she had founded a convent in the west of Constantinople, near the Constantinian walls, and became its first abbess. Although many scholars attribute this to bitterness at having failed to marry Theophilos and become empress, a letter from Theodore the Studite indicates that she had other motivations for wanting a monastic life. It had a close relationship with the nearby monastery of Studios, which was to play a central role in re-editing the Byzantine liturgical books in the 9th and 10th centuries, thus ensuring the survival of her work Kurt Sherry, p. 56. However, since the monastic life was a common vocation in her day, religious zeal is as likely a motive as either depression or aspiration for artistic renown. The Emperor Theophilos was a fierce iconoclast, and any residual feelings he may have had for Cassia did not preserve her from the imperial policy of persecution for her defense of the veneration of icons. Among other things, she was subjected to scourging with a lash. In spite of this, she remained outspoken in defense of the Orthodox faith, at one point saying, I hate silence, when it is time to speak." After the death of Theophilos in 842 his young son Michael III became Eastern Roman Emperor, with the Empress Theodora acting as regent. Together they ended the second iconoclastic period 814 to 842, peace was restored to the empire. Cassia traveled to Italy briefly, but eventually settled on the Greek island of Cassos where she died sometime between 867 and 890 CE. In the city of Panagia, there is a church where Cassia's tomb, reliquiary may be found. Works Cassiani wrote many hymns which are still used in the Byzantine liturgy to this day. Cassiani became known to the great Theodore the Studite, while she was still a young girl, and he was impressed by her learning and literary style. 
She not only wrote spiritual poetry, but composed music to accompany it. She is regarded as an exceptional and rare phenomenon. Among composers of her day at least 23 genuine hymns are ascribed to her. Hymn of Cassia The most famous of her compositions is the eponymous Hymn of Cassia also known as the Troparion of Cassiani, which is chanted each year at Matins on Holy Wednesday which in usual parish practice is sung Tuesday evening at the end of the Apostitia. Tradition says that in his later years the Emperor Theophilus, still in love with her, wished to see her one more time before he died, so he rode to the monastery where she resided. Cassia was alone in her cell, writing her hymn when she realized that the commotion she heard was because the imperial retinue had arrived. She was still in love with him but was now devoted to God and hid away because she did not want to let her old passion overcome her monastic vow. She left the unfinished hymn on the table. Theophilus found her cell and entered it alone. He looked for her but she was not there, she was hiding in a closet, watching him. Theophilus, overcome with sadness, cried and regretted that moment of pride when he rejected such a beautiful and intellectual woman, then he noticed the papers on the table and read them. When he had finished reading, he sat and added one line to the hymn, then he left. The line attributed to the emperor is the line, Those feet whose sound Eve heard at dusk in paradise and hid herself for fear. Legend says that as he was leaving he noticed Cassia in the closet but did not speak to her, out of respect for her wished privacy. Cassia emerged when the emperor was gone, read what he had written and finished the hymn. The music for the hymn is slow, sorrowful and plaintive, lasting about 10 to 20 minutes, depending on tempo and style of execution. It requires a very wide vocal range, and is considered one of the most demanding, if not the most demanding, pieces of solo Byzantine chant, and cantors take great pride in delivering it well. It is also sung by choirs in unison, often underpinned by Byzantine vocal bass drone. The faithful make a point of going to church specifically, to listen to Cassiani, that evening. In many places in Greece, the bridegroom matin service of Great Tuesday is popular with sex workers, who may not often be seen in church at other times of the year. They come in great numbers, in order to hear the hymn of Cassiani, as the hymn is associated with the woman fallen in many sins. Portrayals. <inaudible> 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 Many fictitious stories were created around her relationship with Emperor Theophilos. Contemporary historians such as Glycas, Tochiprodromos, Codinos, Zoneras and Giorgios Amartolos described her exile in Italy during the Iconoclasi Wars and later settled and died in Cassos sometime between 867 and 890 CE. She is portrayed by Karima McAdams in the fifth season of the television series Vikings. Other works Among the other hymns she composed are the following The Doxistishan chanted at the Vesperal Divine Liturgy on Christmas Eve Numerous hymns in honor of saints found in the Menion fixed cycle of the Eastern Orthodox liturgical calendar, such as Feast of the Nativity of the Forerunner, 24 June among her hymns in the Triodion liturgical book used during Great Lent are the Ermoy for the Matins canon of Great Thursday. Her longest composition is a canon for the departed, consisting of 32 strophes, to be chanted at a peristis memorial services. <laughs> <laughs> Religious commemoration The feast day of Saint Cassiani is celebrated by the Orthodox Church on September 7. She is often depicted on the icon of the Sunday of Orthodoxy, the first Sunday of Great Lent, because of her strong defense of the veneration of icons. Topic recordings The following are commercial recordings of the music of Cassia, Kronos Quartet, Early Music, Lacrimae Antiquae, USA 1997. Includes an instrumental arrangement of Cassia's using the apostate tyrant as his tool. Sarband, Sacred Women, Women as Composers and Performers of Medieval Chant. Dorian, USA 2001. Album contains one piece by Cassia, Augustus Stitcheron Idiomelon Doxtacon, Vespers of December 25, Athens MS 883, which is also recorded on the album by Vocane. 
Deborah Kayser and Nick Siavo's The Fallen Woman CD released 2008. Includes a recording of the Cassia hymn. For further information please see http colon slash slash net slash a recent performance of the Cassia hymn by this duo has been uploaded to YouTube. See https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash user slash Dimitri Kiriako parts 4 and 5 of 7 vocame, Cassia, Byzantine hymns of the first woman composer. Christophorus, Germany 2009. 18 tracks, with full sung texts in Greek script, German and English translations. Choral settings of Cassiani, with members of Capella Romana and the English Chamber Choir. Various recordings of the Troparion of Cassiani and When Augustus Reigned. Released in 2011. See also Byzantine music